John Gill, Revelations chapter 2, verse 2, reading first from the King James Bible, quote, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, unquote. John Gill, quote, quote, I know thy works. The good works, both of ministers and churches. No evil works are mentioned, nor anything complained of in this church, but an abatement of the fever of her first love, Christ, as the omniscience God knows all the works of his people and the springs and principles and ends and the views of them, whether they are done in obedience to him and spring from love to him and are performed in his strength and by his grace, and are directed to his glory. And such he takes notice of, approves of, and is well pleased with, not as the ground of his delight in their persons, but as the fruits of his own grace. And during the apostolic age, churches and ministers were very diligent in working. Yea, they were laborious, as follows. And thy labor, particularly the labor of ministers, of the gospel in these times, in the frequent preaching of it, in season and out of season, and in the constant administration of the ordinances and in the di diligent exercise of church discipline. The work of the minister is a laborious work in his ministry, to the mind in his study, and to the body of the outward discharge of it, and it becomes more so through the malice and opposition of enemies and weakness of friends, and such as are diligent and laborious deserve respect, even double honor, and though they may not have it from men, yet Christ takes notice of them and their labors and commends them for them and will reward them. And thy patience, as this may refer to the ministers of the word, it may denote their patience in suffering reproaches and persecutions for the sake of the gospel, which they bore patiently, cheerfully, and constantly, and in bearing the infirmities of weak saints in their several communities, and in reclaiming and restoring persons out of the way, and in waiting for the success of their ministry and the continuance and perseverance in it. And as this may respect members of churches, it may point at this their patience under afflictions from the hand of God and under reproach and persecution from men for their embracing and professing the gospel and their patient waiting for the heavenly glory and their firm expectation of it and their perseverance unto it. And how thou canst not bear them that are evil, they, that were so either in their principles or in their practices or both, men that lived immoral lives and held erroneous doctrine, these, the primitive ministers and churches, could not bear. They had an inward abhorrency and detestation of them in their minds. They could not bear them in communion with them. They it, admonished them according to the nature of their offenses and cast out such as were obstinate and incorrigible. They withdrew from such as were disorderly and rejected Heretics from the first and second admonitions. Their zeal for church discipline is here taking notice of to their commendation. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. This doubtless was done in the church at Ephesus, where after the apostle Paul's departure, grievous wolves and sheep's clothing entered, and men ar arose from among themselves, speaking perverse things, Acts 20, verse 29. Yet it was not peculiar to that church, though it was to the apostolic age, for in no other could men from any face pretend to be apostles of Christ, and such there were who sprung up in the several churches at Jerusalem, Corinth, Galatia, and elsewhere, who called themselves the apostles of Christ, but were false apostles, deceitful workers. They pretended to have their doctrine, call, mission, and commission immediately from Christ as the true apostles had and a power to work miracles and talk 
of inspirations and revelations by the Spirit of God. Now the apostles, ministers, and churches of those times tried their pretensions and doctrines by the Word of God and by the fruits which they produced in themselves and others. And through that discerning of spirits which they had, they found them to be liars, and they were not nor had they what they pretended to be, and have and exposed them as such. Unquote. Footnote from the reader. That has continued on to this day. I have seen people who call themselves apostles. I have seen people that call themselves prophets, prophetesses, all sorts of names that are self-given or given by their family or friends, of which I've always, almost always, not almost always, always found them to be false, and also most of them I have found to be not Christians. End of the footnote.